The question that I have is, could you do an example on calculating the vertical stress change due to a rectangular loaded area? Here is an example. We have a rectangular footing and the footing pressure is 330 kilopascal. We are interested in finding the change in vertical stress below points A, B and C. A happens to be at one of the corners of the rectangle. B is outside the rectangle and C is inside the rectangle. We would like to find the change in stress at a depth of 6 meters. Let's consider point A. I would like to use a chart that's a little bit more finely graduated. This chart is from Holson Kovacs, the book by Holson Kovacs. So the first thing we do is to calculate the dimensionless factors little m and little n. Little m is b over z, which is 9 over 6, and that works out to be 1.5. Little n is L over z, where L is 18 meters, divided by 6, and that works out to be 3. Also want to make a little note here that you could switch b and l. You will get the same answer. So I take the vertical line at 3, go up to the curve that corresponds to 1.5. So I get about uh, 0.227. Delta sigma z is then calculated to be 74.9 kilopascal. So this point is pretty easy because this point happens to coincide with one of the four corners and therefore the theory is directly applicable. Now let's consider point B which is not one of the four corners. So what do we do? We use the principle of superposition. Now, coming back to this little picture here, we see that the area of the footing, which is this, is obtained by subtracting this little rectangle from this long rectangle, right? And point B happens to be at the corner for both of these rectangles, for this little rectangle and for this long rectangle. So we go ahead and calculate the change in stress corresponding to each of these rectangles, subtract the smaller one from the big one in order to get the change in stress at point B due to the footing loading. So we go ahead and calculate these dimensionless factors, little m and little n, for each of the rectangle and find the corresponding influence values for each of the rectangles. I got 0.228 for the long one and 0.178 for this little rectangle. So now we apply this equation and I get a value of 16.5 kilopascal for the uh, change in vertical stress below point B. Now let's work on point C. The approach is the same. We use the principle of superposition. We come up with rectangles such that point C will be at one of the corners of these rectangles. So what I have done here is I have divided this into four sub-rectangles, one, two, three, and four. If I add up the contributions coming from each of these sub-rectangles, I get the um, change in stress due to the entire rectangle. Since we have a few rectangles involved, the calculations are better done in a table like this. So for each of these areas, you calculate the M and N and the corresponding I and list them over here. And then you sum up the, the last column in order to get the sum of the influence values for each of these sub rectangles. Why are we summing up? Because we know the total contributions coming from each of these rectangles is going to be summed up, right? Then you apply this equation right here, which basically says the um, change in vertical stress under point C equals change in vertical stress due to rectangle 1 plus the one due to rectangle 2, plus the one due to rectangle 3, plus the one due to rectangle 4. Because we know each of these um, quantities are going to, be, going to involve Q, we can factor that out. 
and then we have sum of i left in the equation. So that's why we found the sum of i ahead of time right here. All right, so you come back and substitute that in this equation, and I get a value of 220.8 kilopascal for the change in stress. You may want to note that these calculations are not ex very precise because we are using a chart and depending on the person who is using it, it is um, um, likely that he or she is going to come up with different uh, values. But the final answer should be pretty close. It should not be too different from each other. If you are looking to calculate the stresses a little bit more precisely, you may want to use the equations or the table. In fact, if you are using the equations or the table, uh, you can actually computerize the whole process.